Kelly. Welcome back, guys. Uh, alcohol and drug addiction has really become a big problem here in the U.S., but in San Antonio, treatment is available at Soba, Texas. It's a unique recovery center. It goes beyond the traditional 30-day program. In fact, they go way beyond because every month, here we talk about helping you uh, recover from addiction. Joining us this morning, CEO Greg Hanley. Also joining us, Tara Connor, Miss USA 2006, a recovery advocate, and actor Daniel Baldwin. It's good to see good you guys. Good to see you. Who's this little cutie this is you brought Gypsy. today? Hi, Gypsy. She's, Always good to see the Gypsy. Little one. Mm -hmm. You know, I, right after the last time we had a segment here, uh, it was just maybe a few days after that, we heard about Demi Lovato mm -hmm. um, relapsing, going in rehab. Uh, it's so tragic, it's so hard, but it gives us the opportunity to talk about it mm -hmm. because obviously this is a situation that even in Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, you are affected by drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of want to start there um, because I read an article about this and, and in the article they mentioned that her, her parents and her friends were afraid to talk to her. They saw the road she was going down mm -hmm. and they were afraid to say something right. because they were concerned that it would create conflict. Well, yeah. my thing with people, that's, uh, we call that codependency, but my thing with people who are afraid to be honest with their loved ones, it's like you're caring more about their feelings than you are about their life. Right. And in these types of situations where you're dealing with a, a progressive terminal disease, you have to treat it like the disease that it is and not sugarcoat it. You wouldn't sugarcoat your diabetes medicine or your chemo. Here's the thing is that... Uh, People get confused. Let's say Demi Lovato didn't make it from her overdose. Right. And now, do you want to live your life, the whole rest of your life, going, I wish I would have said something? Right. And regret that? Or regret having somebody getting upset because you did say what's going on? Right. And, and people are afraid to speak up, and you have to speak up. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't have to be mean, it can just be, hey. I'm worried about you, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, let's let's check in, and, and your program seems a little off, and before this gets carried away, um, let's, maybe let's do something. Right. It doesn't have to go to, the elevator doesn't have to hit the basement. Right. You can press that button anywhere that you want, and, and the worst thing that, that would be regrettable is I should have said something. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the problem, we discussed this earlier, is that unlike a, a cancerous tumor where you have removed, you get, you do the chemo, you do whatever treatment you have afterwards, um, this is an ongoing treatment. Okay. It requires action. And so, particularly when you're dealing with people in the celebrity realm, they've got all kinds of people around them telling yes. them how wonderful they are. Right. And blah, blah. Now, I, I used this as an example before. Your agent will negotiate whether or not you have your hair person, your makeup person, your trainer. You can say my sober person. You can go. Right. You can go out there and 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 for her, I think. And all those people that you mentioned, they can be sober too. Yeah. Right. And yeah. You know, so that's you surround my question. Yourself. How important is it when you're going through, you know, a recovery situation? How important is it to surround yourself? with a team of well, sober people, whether you're living in Hollywood or you're you living here in the middle life. of the pack, right. because the outside of the herd is who gets picked off. Right. 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 And, and, and the other thing to remember too, you know, I would go to the person that makes the call sheet at work and I would say, could you please add on there that we're having a, a, a 12 step meeting in my trailer at lunch. Mm -hmm. And so, and what, what inevitably happens is that um, one person kind of knocks at your door and goes, hey, are, are you having a 12-step meeting? Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah. By the end of two weeks, there's yeah. 10 people oh, in my right. little trailer yeah. all hanging out, gobbling down lunch in a half hour, and we're having a quick meeting every right. day. That's the kind of stuff that she probably needs to take a look at doing to maintaining her sobriety. Because yeah. she had years. Like five years. years. Yeah. She had five years sober. So you, mm -hmm. you, know, you think she'd be out of danger and have a good program, but it can slip If you quickly. lose your program, you can forget. What That's the problem was? So true. And then yeah. you might think, you know what? Wine won my problem. I could have a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you look down after three glasses and, and you have what? heroin in your hand again. Yeah. And you go, uh oh, this right. is not good. Is the key to being successful at recovery 
that just that surrounding yourself with the right kind of people can you go it alone does that work i don't think that doing recovery by yourself is a very smart idea because i'm not going to hold myself accountable if i'm alone but i surround myself with people that tell me the truth even if they think it's going to make me mad yeah and so you know it has to come first in your life otherwise you know you start to kind of fall down this weird ladder that you can't really seem to get back up to the top floor because it just overwhelms you i've had moments in my life my really bad stuff went on and I remember when I was first new, I'm sitting at a grocery store looking at the vodka, thinking, and I had something really bad happen. And I'm thinking, you know, I could grab that bottle and not, and just check out. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden the phone rang and it was one of my buddies from recovery that goes, hey, how's it going? And, and somehow I made it through that moment to get to the next, yeah. but without that, I don't know where it went, right. and yeah. that happened so many times. Right. And, and the other thing, too, that Greg pointed out to me about mine, I went to rehab eight times before I went to Greg's. He was the ninth stop for me. Yeah. And, and, and reputable places that many of them are pretty good, you know, but the one thing was step 12 was mm-hmm. having had that spiritual awakening, you reach out to it. So you gotta be of service. Right. Yeah, part of my program, oh, it's so nice that you do that for this person. It's like, <laughs> Selfish. No, I'm trying to keep right. myself sober. Right. Yeah. Trust me, rolling into some guy's living room and talking about how bad he needs to get sober and doing that work for a couple hours a day, a couple days a week, helps me get home and stay sober. Right. They say yeah. to keep it, you gotta give it away. Right. Yeah. And if you're by yourself, who are you giving it to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so get with the new people and help out. I mean, at the spiritual change that you get and, and how you regain your spirit and your esteem is by small esteemable acts. And it, it can be just talking to a new guy who's nervous and scared and saying hello. And, and you do these things on a daily basis mm-hmm. and then you re- regain that, that spirit again mm-hmm. that doesn't make you feel like you need to drink or use anymore. I'll tell you what, there is a community here in San Antonio of sober people. It is SOBA. It's in San Antonio, and they are ready to help you this morning. Uh, These guys are all ready to help you this morning. So take a look at your screen because the phone number is there. Uh, It's SOBA, Texas. The phone number is 210-727-2692. Call, ask the questions you need to ask. Just make that first step. We've got more when we come back. We're talking with our friends from Soba, Texas, Greg Hanley, actor Daniel Baldwin, and Tara Connor. Everybody's live streaming on their respective Facebook page. I love that because you guys are all about reaching out and helping. You're all so very accessible, which I think is amazing when you do call Soba, Texas. Uh, oftentimes, you're going to talk to one of these people, and I think that is amazing. There's another article that I wanted to bring up because it scared me really bad when I read it, and this is uh, what the article says. Rate of pregnant women addicted to opioids skyrocketed in 15 years. That, to me, is shocking because I when you're pregnant, you're supposed to get off of everything, right? Sure. Easy for someone to say who's not addicted to opioids. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that look like when you're pregnant? You're you're facing a whole new, you know, exciting time in your life, but you can't get off these pills. And you can't say anything. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, when you I go to your know. when you go you to know? your gyno, it's not like he's going to take you in there and blood screen you right. for what narcotics you're on. Right. Uh, you know. Uh, you know. It's interesting that you say this about in the last 15 years. Try to try to to ingest this now. Ten years ago, overdoses were not in the top 20 yeah. as causes of death in the United States. Mm-hmm. It is now the number one in 10 years cause of death in the age group of 50 and under. Wow. They, they, have, they have people that are being trained to detox babies. Right. Yeah. Because and they, and they have to go addicted. through it. Go through it. So. I'm hoping we have a new product. I was going to say, this is the perfect time to bring this up because what you just said before that is that a lot of women can't talk about this. You know, they're stuck. They don't know what to do. You have a new at-home detox kit coming out uh, that's going to help people with a soft landing. What does that mean? Well, it's called OPTOX. Okay. And um, like these type of women, they can just order this. And it's a non-narcotic, non-addicting, all-natural, you can't overdose, you can't take too much, and it will help people get a soft landing. And in our world means that you can get over the hump of a opiate detox mm-hmm. without, um, you know, being in pain from it. So 
it's a it's a combination of a lot of different um, herbs, but they do the same thing as these gnarly um, right. detox type things do. And so it's like like you're talking about these, they can just get this and and do it at home. But here's the great thing about this product, uh, Opie Talks. It's not just it's a it's a pain relief. Um, an homeopathic medication. So the same reason why you were taking with chronic back or chronic, and got hooked on these opioids, you can take this to help you get over the hump to get off the opioid, mm -hmm. and it will still do the job of being wow. pain with Greg will tell you, he's, he broke his neck. Broke it. It has never been a day like with my broken back, a day of being pain free. How do you feel now? Perfect. That's, yeah, completely pain-free. That's amazing. And that's, I mean, I've gotten to know you guys over the, over the years, um, but to me, it's so amazing that you've put the work in to figure out and to find a product like mm -hmm. this, because this is your life. You are here to help people, and you're doing it once again. We have to find solutions. Unfortunately, one of the bigger things that Greg has to deal with is making a Schindler's List every month, because people want to get in, or they can't get in, mm -hmm. and, you know, he has a business to run, and it's unfortunate how many people just <clears throat> have a want to get sober and a need, and they just don't have the resources to get there. So this is a way to maybe get that done in the privacy of your own home. I'm real excited to hear about this, and we'll talk more about it in the coming months. Um, I want to talk about recovery today as well. This is just another piece of the puzzle. Uh, Greg puts out a magazine featuring many people who have struggled with recovery and made a comeback. And this month, Jason Williams is on the cover. Um, sports fans, people will probably remember back in the early 2000s, uh, just uh, dealing with a lot of alcohol, partying, and there was an incident where he had been drinking and he accidentally shot and killed his limo driver. Mm -hmm. And you know, we hear stories from people who think they're in a bad place, right? right. But to be in that place where you have killed someone right. mm -hmm. and to come back from that, it just shows you that it can be done. Right. You know? I mean, there's nothing that we can't recover from. Even if we are in prison and we have to do a sentence or if we're sick or whatever, if we're willing to change our lives and if we get to the place where we just desperately need to do something different, your life can be recreated. My life was so much better when I got sober and when I really started doing the work, because it's work that has to be done. It's not just something that I stop it and I'm all better all of a sudden. But it just enhances everyone's lives. I've seen people from Skid Row get sober, start working at the Salvation Army to give back, and it's just this constant movement of people who have found a solution, that practice the solution, and want to get it out there to as many yeah. people as we can. And when you've hurt somebody, especially like him, he killed somebody, or you've hurt your family, or, or you've done something, when you get get clean and sober, giving back is how you make it right. Mm -hmm. So he'll need to do this because he can't fix that. Right. Yeah. He can't change that. But if if something that horrible in his life can turn into something that he creates a life of helping other people, then that, that moment has value to it. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to go to break. We're going to come back. We've got some questions that have been coming in from the viewers this morning. There's a phone number there at the bottom of your screen. It is the phone number to Sova, Texas. It's a recovery facility here in San Antonio. We're very close to you. It is a simple phone call. Call or text. You can send a text message if that's easier for you. 210-727-2692. We'll be right back. Sometimes we do things for the thrill. Sometimes we do things for survival. There have been different points in my life where I didn't know if I would survive. Seek humility or it will find you. I have faced many fears confronted many challenges. Having the courage to overcome the beast of addiction is by far the biggest victory of my life. True victory is victory over oneself.
Thanks for watching this morning. We've been talking about addiction and recovery. If you are looking for help, uh, there is an amazing facility here in San Antonio. It's called Soba Texas. Greg Hanley is the CEO and founder. Actor Daniel Baldwin is joining us and Tara Connor, Miss USA 2006 and recovery advocate. And we've got some questions that have been coming in. Uh, so we'll start with the first one. My brother and I have been going through a lot at home and I'm scared that he's falling into a crowd that does drugs. How can I convince him not to hang out with them anymore? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'll know. Okay. So it's so hard when it comes to addiction because we all want to do something about it. And unfortunately, it's like we have to have the experiences we need to have. I mean, drugs are everywhere. A lot of people do them. I don't even think there is a good or bad crowd these days. Right. It's just, um, it just is. It's around. And so, you know, people. Introduce them to a pretty girl that doesn't do that. There you go. Or just be right? like, hey, look at this girl. She's sober and she doesn't have anything like that. Absolutely. You know, you gotta kind of move things around. Get rid of the bad. We're just talking about when's your date? She's getting married? Uh, uh, I love him. I let him know. But, you know, it's. The best you can do is yeah. just let them know you're concerned mm -hmm. and tell them the truth about how it makes you feel. And Try to include him with a better crowd that you're That's in. That's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think, too, that the thing that stands out to me about that question is that there's the possibility that this person is already doing something that right. you'd be worried about. And Greg has always, always said to me, and I stole this shamelessly, thank you, um, you can go down to, to any pharmacy and you can buy a test. Mm -hmm. And you can walk up to a person and say, you can even take the, the, the pressure off yourself and say, you know, I'm hearing a lot of stuff and I myself don't see it, but I'm wondering if you would just go pee in this cup for a minute so yeah. I can make sure everything's cool. Mm -hmm. If you've got You'll nothing, right to, away. If you've got nothing to hide, yeah. you'll walk right to the bathroom all okay. indignant going, are you kidding me? This but, is ridiculous. But if that person right. says, well, I'm not being it. Oh, no, then we got, we got a Absolutely. We got a problem. That was me. Uh, here's another question from a viewer. <laughs> does insurance pay for rehab? What do you do if someone doesn't have insurance? So insurance does a lot of times. Okay. But it depends on what kind of insurance, which rehabs, or mm -hmm. some in-network, some out-of-network. There's a lot, a lot of different things. But, but our intake people can check that for right. you. And so they can tell you what. exactly what it would take. Uh, and, and if your insurance can't work at my place, we'll refer you over to where okay. it can. If you don't have insurance, mm -hmm. then it costs, you know, it, it's like anything, you gotta pay your way in. Yeah, absolutely. And it, but there's options for that. They can range from a little bit of money to a huge amount of money, depending on where you And there from. are free facilities out there if you can find one and get a bed. Mm -hmm. um, there's support, like if you just look for recovery support and local meetings and stuff like that, like don't let not being able to get into treatment be what stops you from getting sober. Okay, I'm gonna skip to the last question because I think this is a really important question. Uh, my sister has depression and a history of alcohol abuse. What can I do to help her get on the road to recovery and keep her taking her antidepressants medication properly that's that's a good question Contour. right because it's Contour. important to be on the right path and when you're prescribed medication you gotta you know take I see, depending a, on what I see a lot of people sure. who get on antidepressants and it works mm -hmm. and then they get off them because they go I'm not depressed anymore right. so I'm gonna get off them and then they crash mm -hmm. so it's always about communication and and when you have concerns Talk about it a little bit right. and, and open a dialogue to where even if somebody might not be receptive now, the dialogue is open mm -hmm. and you can kind of at least talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's always good to start the conversation and hopefully with this show that we do here, uh, it kind of opens the door for that conversation as well. Soba, Texas in San Antonio, the phone number to call is 210-727-2692. Uh, we will be right back. We've got just a little bit more, so stay with us. Chatting with our friends from Soba, we brought in Alex Dragici. He's the director of operations, and oftentimes when you call, you'll be right there to answer people's questions, to show them around the facility. Yep. It's good to see you. So what's been going on out there? I know you guys are always very busy. You've got people coming in all the time, uh, but the facility is an amazing facility. It's amazing. You know what's going on? This past week, we had our first Tech Soba Texas client 
that now has three years sober. Awesome. So they have to be officially out of our facility two years to be able to get hired. Mm -hmm. So we hired our first client that went through. That is oh, that's that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, three years sober. And you know, that kind of ties back into what we talked about earlier about surrounding yourselves with a sober community mm -hmm. uh, because you've got to be in the right place with the right people to continue this journey. Mm -hmm. The alumni and support group has grown. I mean, yeah. it's been four right. years now. So there's a lot of people that come on every Thursday night when we do the alumni that are getting another chip for a year or multiple years mm -hmm. or six months or whatever it is. You know, it's so important to mention because a lot of facilities, you know, do the 30-day mm -hmm. deal, they open the door, see yeah. you later, like, and then, then that's luck. that. Yeah, see you that later is as not well. not what you guys do, and it makes a tremendous difference right. in the treatment and the program because you do welcome everyone back to be a part of something. Yep, 100%. Absolutely. The, Ma the Malibu facility, it was so bad that we had to have barkers. We had to hire <laughs> guys everyone that were out on the back. giant patio to go, shh, quiet, quiet. Because there were hundreds of people who come to the Thursday yeah. night meeting. Mm -hmm. It was so great for the newcomer mm -hmm. to come see people just like them, same age that already had two years sober. Right. And, and having really fun powerful. and doing things. Like yeah, totally, class. digging mm -hmm. it. There is life after a hard time, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, there really is. The and best I think life ever. people yeah. need to see this and know that. And I love that you guys come and were able to talk about this. And so thank you so much for sharing such a big part of yourselves. We appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned, if you are looking for help in San Antonio, the facility is Soba, Texas. The phone number is on your screen. You text can call two. or text 210-727-2692. We'll see you next time. Sometimes we do things for the thrill. Sometimes we do things for survival. There have been different points in my life where I didn't know if I would survive. Seek humility or it will find you. I have faced many fears confronted many challenges. Having the courage to overcome the beast of addiction is by far the biggest victory of my life. True victory is victory over oneself.